basement Level vibes With another one Another one Straight up Blackness I are Aye I who tell the truth Mark Benscop Defend the ghetto youth Mark Benscop Registration is the fruit Mark Benscop Straight up from the root Mark Benscop I who tell the truth Mark Benscop Defend the ghetto youth Mark Benscop Registration is the fruit Mark Benscop Straight up from the root Mark Benz, Benz, I do it for the love, him not do it for no money, straight up, him attack, educating everybody, big up my friends, and big up my family, turn on the radio, catch the vibes, it's integrity, straight up, Benz, cop stands for unity, one people, one nation, one destiny, free up the truth, in at the air, even the blind can see, mm. the deaf can hear, the dumb can talk, the crook can walk, boom, I who tell the truth, Mark Benz, One day, me be in a bamboo dam, and me see, see Tyra lay down there, and me ask, see Tyra, what shall do there? See Tyra, high up, she penny good wine like a box of gold. See Tyra, oh man, day, oh see Tyra, oh man, day, see Tyra, oh man, day, oh see Tyra, oh man, day. Hey fans, it's karaoke and oldies night this and every Thursday at Club Twilight Sideline Dam, Buxton. Dance to the magical songs of yesteryear by popular DJs and Camps Audio. Admission is free. Come out, let's make memories at Club Twilight Sideline Dam, Buxton North. Oh yes, and good evening to you. Good night. It's night now. You know the Spanish; they 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 make that distinction. You know, um, buenas noches, and buenas tardes. <laughs> the difference. I remember my Spanish days. Miss Henry, um, who taught us Spanish in Form One, and uh, you know you have to make the distinction between uh, evening and night. Well, yes, you're on to straight up tonight. I am sitting in for Mark, who is under the weather. You know, as, as Mark says, when we when we get in advance in age, these little niggers kick in. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome all of you. I see some some names here that are familiar to me, and then there are others that are not 
um, familiar. Thank you very much. Um, golly, golly God. Oh my goodness. Right. Um, thanks for having me. And uh, um, as I said, this is not Politics 101. It is straight up with Mark Benchop. I'm sitting in for Mark tonight. I'm expected to be joined by Wayne Caesar a little later on. I, uh, it's it's, it's uh, the week after the Easter weekend, the story of the crucifixion and the resurrection is one that, of course, resonates uh, with all of us, uh, both at the individual level and at the collective level. Uh, our, our ability to constantly overcome is one uh, that uh, resonates with all of us, all of us. Amanda Court, good evening. Good evening to, I noticed, Danet Booker, my um, country woman. Um, uh, Carl Miller, uh, Brenda Braffitt, good evening to all of you. Good night to all of you. Good night to those of you who are joining us from England. It's now in the morning. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's approaching four-day morning. Um, we came into the folk song, one that I am familiar with, familiar with, Sitari uh, Ragyal and Sitaira Aishi Petticoat, and wang like a boxing boar. <laughs> oh boy. Um, the story of our villages, the story of our villages, the story of our women who, uh, uh, who have been asserting their independence a long, long time ago. A long, long time ago. You know, um, <clears throat> they're talking now about uh, women's liberation and all of that. You know, if you go back to what we refer to as ancient Africa, um, <laughs> and you, you go back to um, the Nile Valley civilizations, you will find that women, women for, um, um, women uh, were very much very much um, uh, uh, powerful women owned the property in those civilizations. So the whole notion of women's liberation um, is, is, is nothing new. And when they created those villages, they bought their lands and they created the villages. Women had a prominent role to play, prominent role to play. And the story of Sitaira Gyal Aishi Petticoat and wine like a boxing boar is it's 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 legendary, and uh, um, uh, it has come down through the ages. Our folk songs, and we call them folk songs, though, to distinguish between that and other songs, is the the songs of the folk coming out of their out of their experiences and and creating music and the lyrics telling. One day me be in a bamboo dam and me see Sitaira lay down there and me Ah, see Tyra, what she do there? See Tyra, I sub she many good wine like a box and gold. See Tyra, oh man, day, oh see Tyra, oh. And you know, you see, one day maybe in a bamboo dam. Bamboo dam is the back dam. Women <coughs> used to go in the back dam. Women used to go in the back dam, and they used to lie down and take their nap, and so on. You know, bamboo dam, and, and 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 so forth. They were they were workers alongside their men. They were workers alongside um, their men, and so the story of Sitaria, uh, bamboo dam, and she ice up she petticoat and she wine. Sitaria, more man there, man a run, man a run from woman. <laughs> I tell she more man there. Don't worry me, they get more man. <laughs> Hi, hi, 
Oh, welcome and uh, uh, good, 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 good night to you. Um, I noticed some um, some people are joining us from California. It's very much afternoon in California. Um, three hours behind, I think four hours behind um, Guyana and New York. Where I am is three hours, and California is out there. Um, uh, they are very much afternoon. And I lived in California for three years, and I remember they used to have a they used to have an Easter picnic. You used to go out and fly your kite. I don't know if they still have it there, but they used to have a Guyanese Easter thing there. Perhaps they still have it there. Um, and I, I, as I, I lived there for three years, I taught at one of the universities out there. Three of the best years of my life because California, Los Angeles, uh, California, and the environs is a world is a world by itself. Uh, those of you New, New Yorkers, as you would say, New York is New York, a world by itself. Well, Los Angeles, California, is 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 a world by itself, world by itself. Uh, I, I have three of the best years of my life. I I, I spend. I haven't I haven't three hours. Um, Bill is saying it's three hours behind Guyana, so I suppose. When, when you all go f go back or go forward, it becomes four hours. <coughs> Where I live in Arizona, the time doesn't change. It's the only state in America where the time remains the same. It's mountain time. So whether the clock goes forward or it comes back, um, Arizona remains the same. Welcome. Welcome to uh, Straight Up. Well, you know, whenever I come in straight up, or whenever I view straight up, I have to, um, I have to get my, my dose of reality, folk wisdom, I call it. Um, Lemon, I think is the operator who's working with me tonight. Lemon, can I get daughter? Um, but here is, here is Mr. Caesar. Here is Mr. Caesar, who is, I saw him earlier in the evening. He makes the wrongs. So I suppose, how are you, how are you, Mr. Caesar? A pleasant good evening to you, Dr. Hines. I'm doing quite fine. How about yourself? Well, I roll, I'm rolling with the punches. I'm rolling with the punches. You know, they come, I bob and weave, bob and weave, but I always stay, as uh, um, Muhammad Ali used to say, um, you know, you, you float like a butterfly and you sting like a bee. <laughs> well said, well said, well said. <laughs> You know, the fight continues, you know, so you do have to float like a butterfly, and, you know, and sting like a bee. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, is Lemon listening to me, Lemon? Lemon are yes, my name is Jasmiti Kaldata, Francis C. Vietnam. And since 1965, I become a voter. And I always place my ex next to the cup. And what they are doing today, I can't take it. So I have no more vote to give to PPP anymore. I'm not going to vote anymore no more. If they have to lose by one vote, they're losing it by data. Oh Jesus Christ, if cost of living double, I don't know what happened. A pound of sugar is three hundred dollars already. Flower everything gone up, everything just raising. You gotta get about forty thousand dollars for buy good ration. You gotta get three man now, a weekend man, a monthly man, and a and a um you know about Russian? <laughs> yes, yes, Dr. Heinz, I do. <laughs> and you know, from time to time, you have to bulk up on your Russian, you know? There you go. All right, there then. you go. When, 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 when you move up a little bit, you know, when them lady cussing out Martin the village, they say, me? Me not go buy quarter pong and half pong thing. Me <laughs> buy back sugar <laughs> and back flour. <laughs> and of course, of course, the sugar bag had, had, had multiple, multiple um, uses because often it was, it was bedding. <laughs> yes, yes. It had so many different purposes, Dr. Hines. Correct. Correct. Yes. But bedding is a well-known one. That's right. That's right. That's right. When you pee up on the bedding and then <laughs> you, you throw it in the sun, you know what? You turn the sun, it's sun out. 
Some <laughs> of the be, you know, um, uh, uh, Batiko woman, Bobby Lang, like a lang dam, so long, let me want for so come. Bobby Lang, Batty Lang, woman, let me want for so ten yard flower bag of all up ship and palam. So, flower bag used to in the old days serve as brazier and 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 all kind of thing. I mean, our people were so creative, yes, so Most creative. Crazy. So creative, and, and 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 we are the products of that creativity, and sometimes we forget from whence we come, and often not pay homage to those who made it possible for us to be so-called modern. They were modern in those days. That was their modernity, and they set the stage for us. Um, when have you been following the? Um, hearings, the United Nations hearings, and um, the Sister Teixeira was there, and we um, we saw what happened, and 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 then the the committee has issued its reports, and the press has been given very liberal coverage to it. Have you been following it? Yes, Doctor Heinz. Top point. I have been following it. And of course, you know, the, the press is, is totally dominated for the most part by the PPPC. So you would expect the coverage to be somewhat limited, right? Because that is something that they would want to hide. They and would. look, Dr. Hines, what the UN, what the UN team would have revealed is exactly what people like yourself and Mr. Bench, Mr. Bork, and all of you guys have been talking about all the time. They have just brought everything to fruition, huh? Yes, yes, yes. And you know, sometimes we have to let our viewers know that. Because as you know, things have not been nice for those of us on the opposition side these past three years. And we tend to think that the government is all powerful. The government is in because it acts that way. It acts that way, it dominates everything in the society. So when we have a situation like this, where external forces have, in a sense, lent us their microphone or their megaphone. We have microphones. The United Nations has a megaphone. And in a sense, what they've done is put their megaphone to the service of our people. And it is gratifying to know that the world is now moving behind the rhetoric, you know, Guyana is the fastest growing economy. We know that. Guyana has um, a, one of the largest deposits of oil. We know that. But what happens behind the scene? The world is not always up on that. And these hearings would have gone a long way towards bringing order. What, what struck you most about the hearings as you watched them? Well, what struck me the most, Dr. Hines, is Mr. Shera and the way she responded to many questions because there was a lot of untruths, you know, based on her replies to this committee. You know, she was not truthful. And to the extent Mr. Shera was on the oath, she would have been in very, very, very big trouble because she blatantly told on truths. She okay. played on truth. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Including, you know, accusing Dr. Vincent Adams, amongst other things. You know, they went, she went to all lengths. It was like having, you know, lying Jack Dio sitting right there. Because that is exactly what she did. She pulled a page from his book, you know, and she just lied her way through. But listen, Dr. Hines, the truth is coming to the surface. The truth is coming to the surface. And I agree with you, with what you would have said early on your show, that the PPPC is fighting for ethnic supremacy. That is exactly their goal. They want to see one ethnic group on top. That is their goal one ethnic group on top and as we have been saying over and over again when is that when when they want to get to this ethnic domination they make it look as though 
you know, that uh, they're dealing with normal things. So, for example, take the teacher's strike. You know, you don't want to pay the teacher's basis because you said they don't produce nothing. The, in effect, the, the whole notion that teachers and public servants are lazy, all right? And that uh, the real workers are like the sugar workers, for example, because they produce something. And so, therefore, they deserve better wages. Now, you may say, well, you know, that's a class construct. And it is, in many regards, a class construct. But it's a class construct that has ethnic and racial implications. Because the vast majority of public servants are of one ethnic group. And the vast majority of the people who control the government are of one ethnic group. So in effect, what you have is ethnic contestation, but an uneven contestation where one group controls the levers of power and has the power to distribute resources. The other one, the other group, does not have the power of um, distribution of resources. So it's an uneven contestation. And so the teachers use the one thing that they have that the government doesn't have, and that is their ability to withdraw their labor. And when they withdraw their labor, what they show the, 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 the rest of the society is that there is power in labor. We withdraw our labor, the school close. The, the, the education system comes to stand still. Therein lies the power of the people, the power of the public servants. What does the government say, Wayne? It says, that the withholding of the power by the hitherto powerless is illegal. Speak to that. Well, Dr. Hines, let me first start off by addressing the point that the government is trying to make, that the teachers are not making anything. Yes. Well, Dr. Hines, let's be honest here. Nurses, teachers, what do they do? They provide a service right? We have production economies and we have service economies, right? And then we have mixed economies, right? So how can you say, you understand me, that they're not doing anything? They're not bringing in any money. They are providing a service. No, the first oath of the government should be to serve the people of Guyana. So nurses provide health services, teachers provide educational services. So the government, they're totally, the installed government, let me correct myself, they are totally wrong on that front, okay? Our public servants, they bring a lot of value to the table because they are providing services to the Guyanese people. And we see across the board, from this government that there is a total breakdown in services. There's a total lack of services, Dr. Hines. When you look at the hospital facility, when you look at the water, when you look at the GPL, you know, the Guyanese people are not being served by this government. So when they make a statement like that, it shows me that what they are looking for, they are just looking for businessmen and women they're trying to eliminate, I would think, government jobs and make everything private. There you go. And I, I, I want to pick up on that very important point that you make there. Very important point that you make there. Schools can't run themselves. You can build a school building. Nice. You put everything inside. It can't run itself. You can build all the hospitals you want to build and put them there. They can't run themselves. You need the skills of the teachers, of the nurses, in order for those institutions to work. And so therefore, those workers are as essential as other workers. The cane cutter cuts the cane. He doesn't make the show. So he's just like the public service, he's providing a service. He doesn't produce sugar. He cuts the cane to help to produce the sugar. But when his cutlass slip and cut him, and he got to go to the health center, is the nurses 
who have to stitch him up and bring him back so that he can go back to court that king without the service of the nurses he is not going to be able to reproduce himself after injury to go back and cut the cane. And when he wants his children not to go in that cane field and work there, he wants them to go on to a better job. He sends them to school. Who teaches them to read and write? Who teaches them to reason? Who teaches them to count the money when they become business people? It's the teachers. All of us are in this process together. And this whole thing about saying some workers are more essential than others, it has policy implications. Because if you're saying, Wayne, and you, I wanted to come in on this, if you're saying some workers are more essential, then you are going to pay some workers more than others then you are going to invest in the training of some workers more than others. When Caesar, I want you to elaborate on that. Well, Dr. Hines, you're correct on that, but let's look at it from the perspective when we talk of teachers and we talk of nurses. These fraternities are predominantly dominated by afro guyanese and it's quite concerning to see the way the PBPC acts when it comes to nurses and teachers and from a holistic perspective, public servants, because these areas, these sectors are for the most part, Dr. Hines, dominated by afro guyanese And it is an eye-opener to look and see how this install regime would have closed down the nursing school in Linden. Yes, sir. Right, Dr. Hines? And then we moved to Bangladesh to bring in 500 nurses slash voters, because I am not going to just look at it and say, Dr. Hines, I'm not going to put it in a box and say 500 nurses and end the conversation there. That is also 500 additional votes for the PPPC. While they sit there, now we are an oil-rich nation, Dr. Hines. Like you would have said earlier on the program, we are the fastest growing economy, but yet you cannot pay our nurses. You cannot pay them, but you have the wherewithal to go outside of the country to bring in 500 foreign nurses. And look, the nation that you chose, Bangladesh. Don't that paint a picture, Dr. Hines? Yeah. That paints a picture. So we are sitting in a situation here in Guyana. The Guyanese people are sitting in a situation where the PPPC, wants to dominate and they want to dominate strongly from an ethnic position not just from a party or a government position but from an ethnic position dr heinz they're seeking to change the demographics when it comes to region four the political demographics in region four the PPPC is looking to change because that is a region that they would have never won. I cannot recall the PPPC ever winning Region 4, but they're trying to change the demographics. They're trying to change the demographics and, of course, the subtext. Good evening to all of you. I see some familiar names there, some familiar faces. Some of you are not so familiar. I see my old friend Sherry. Sherry wrote from the East Bank. And I have not seen Sherry in a long time. I've been asking for Sherry. I know now where to find you, Sherry. Um, good evening to all the wonderful people on the East Bank of Demerara, because that's a very important region. That's a very important part of our country. We have all these visitors coming in, all these visitors coming in, 
And when they come in, the first place they are introduced to is the East Bank. And when I don't know how often you go home, but my goodness, and you don't have to go home to know, the East Bank Road is a mess. It is a mess. One would think that if that is your introduction to your country, look at the big shot people that come. The, the, the CIA man was there. Bill Clinton was there. The French um, foreign minister was there just before them. You had the, 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 the look, Bill, how he's smiling, nice and so on, right? Um, they all were there. Right. And you would think that you would invest in the East Bank. You would invest in the East Bank, especially the roadway to make sure that you make a good impression on people who have come in. But no, no, you are investing in other places that you think are beneficial to you. The prejudicial nature of governance in Guyana is palpable when in Caesar. You know, Dr. Hines, it's interesting that you brought up that point about, you know, building up the East Bank, you know, and as soon as people land into Guyana, that's the first place they're introduced to. But when you look at the budgets that would have passed over the last three years, wouldn't you have expected that the East Bank Road would have been done nicely so that these people could have had a beautiful introduction to Guyana since they are talking about all this infrastructural transformation? But we don't see it, Dr. Hines. So where are these monies going? The PBPC has not been transparent. So you have to wonder what is going on here. And Bill Clinton would have made a point. He would have made a point. It's not, it's not exactly the type of oil deal that you have or the quality of the oil deal that you have but is what you do with the money. Now, Dr. Hines, you and I would both agree that this oil deal is not a good deal. But nevertheless, Dr. Hines, Guyana is seeing monies in the sums that we have never seen before. So why can't we see a reflection of all this revenue coming into our country? Why can't we see a reflection when it comes to quality of life for the normal born and bred Guyanese? Why can't we see better services when it comes to GPL, GWI, you know, public hospitals, libraries, amongst so many other things that are lacking in our country, better sport facilities, for our athletes. By the way, Dr. Hines, I just want to take a quick second to say congratulations to all the athletes from Guyana that went to the Carifta Games and did so excellently. I hope that you guys would get some better facilities, some better um, synthetic tracks, a good indoor swimming facility, amongst other things. You know, we are the fastest growing economy. Let's show the world that we are the fastest growing economy. Over to you, Dr. Hines. And I tell you, um, your, your point is so well taken um, there that uh, it, Bill Clinton's statement rings through. Bill Clinton is not a fool. And when you hear Clinton make a statement like that, he's coming at it from an informed position. When people like Bill Clinton leave the United States and come to a place like Guyana, they are coming with the full backing of the United States government. They are briefed, they are informed about what is going on. And when you coupled what Bill Clinton said with what Lula, President Lula said, it is very instructive. Now, you would have hoped that um, Madam Mia Motley or um, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez would be the ones to say those things. But they couldn't say that because they want to hustle a little something from the government. Bill Clinton don't want to hustle nothing from the government. Lula don't want to hustle. They come from rich and powerful countries. They may have economic interest in Guyana at a certain level, but they don't want to beg the government for anything. Hence, 
you see the kind of statement that comes from Clinton and the kind of statement that comes from Lula. And we have this debate, um, Wayne, and I want you to come in on it. Because on my program last week, I had, I had a few people, uh, and one of them, um, Gerald Pereira, he argued very strongly that he doesn't take what these people like the United Nations and Bill Clinton take very seriously because they preach down to us in places like Guyana. They tell us to do things that they don't do in their own country. And so therefore, he does not take what they say as seriously as the rest of us. Where do you stand on that argument? <laughs> you know, Dr. Hines, um, to Mr. Pereira defense, um, based on what would have happened in the past yes. in other countries, yes, where you have these large economies, these 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 larger countries, these richer countries, find wealth in the smaller third world countries, and they either come in, if it's a country with different tribes, they would put the tribes against each other, right? And as they fight, they are reaping all the resources out of the country. When they are finished, those countries are left unstable. So to Mr. Pereira's point, Dr. Hines, we are just as intelligent as anyone else and can manage our business. We, does not, we do not always need people to be talking, and he's right, talking down to us. Sometimes we have to meet at the same level and we have to have discussions because I feel like in every nation there is issues. You look at the United States, um, Dr. Hines, would you not say that there is a drug pandemic in the United States? Would you not say that there's a massive gun issue in the United States? Would you not say to an extent there is racial tension in the United States amongst the parties and all the different things? So we see that everybody have their issues and Guyana is no different. So what Mr. Pereira, I think what he's trying to say is that some of our issues, we can speak to it ourselves. And Dr. Hines, just to expound on that a bit more, Bill Clinton wouldn't need to speak to us, Dr. Hines, if the PPPP, if the PPPC was being democratic and engaging the opposition. And, and this ties back to something that you would have said some time ago, Dr. Hines, when you talk about shared power and you talk about shared governance. And that is something that me and you, myself and you, is on the same page 100%. But the PPPC would never want to do that because these guys are selfish, they are stealing, they're committing economic genocide and financial terrorism on the people of Guyana. Over to you, sir. Very, very, very strong and passionate views here by Mr. Wayne Caesar. In case you're wondering where you are, yes, it is straight up with Mark Benchop. Mark is a, a little bit under the weather. He's getting all like me now. You know, Wayne is a young boy, so Wayne can, can, can think. But Mark getting old like me now. He told me today he used to laugh me and Freddie and we old men when we catching cold every two minutes at so. <laughs> And me see Sitaira laid on my name is Jasniti Kaldata Francis C. Vietnam. And since 1965, I become a voter. And I always place my ex next to the cup. And what they are doing today, I can't take it. So I have no more vote to give to PPP anymore. I'm not going to vote anymore in the moon. If they have to lose by one vote, they're losing it by data. Oh, Jesus Christ, if cost of living double, I don't know what happened. A pound of sugar is $300 already. 
flow with everything gone up. Everything just raising. You gotta get about forty thousand dollars for buy good ration. You gotta get three man now, a weekend man, a monthly man, and a and a um fortnight man. <laughs> hey, hey. The wisdom of the folk, the wisdom of the folk, they're saying it as only they can say it. And when I listen to those ladies, I am glad to be a Guyanese. The wisdom that comes from the folk, not just the folk songs, the folk wisdom, because those songs are full of wisdom. I think we are seeing on the screen here, government, um, government, yes. What, what this is, is an interesting one, Dr. Hines. Vice President Barry Jagdio has announced that the government intends to launch a commission of inquiry into the crime wave that rocked the nation in the early 2000s. Well, Dr. Hines, my, my answer to that very quickly, they need to start in Pradoville. That's there you go. why it needs to start, right in Pradoville. If we're going to talk about that, it starts right there. But, it starts and ends right there. Yeah. But, but Mark... Um, uh, when sorry, Mark is sick. Um, when there is a this is a breakthrough for um, those of us who have been arguing. President Granger wanted to hold wanted to hold an inquiry. The PPP said no, they don't want no inquiry from 2002. Um, <laughs> the troublers they want it to go back to the 1960s to the Burnham years, and so the inquiry never came off. Now the white people say, you must hold an inquiry. And the box against the wall, they decide that they are going to hold an inquiry. Now, we all, we grew up knowing that when white people talk, a lot of times our leaders respond to them than they respond to the old people. All right? We understand that. But we have to be pragmatic and picking up from where you left off. That while I hear Gerald, I'm also saying that when our interests coincide with the white people's interests, we take it. Yeah? Because that's what they do. They deal with us when their interests coincide with us. I think in this instance, the white people talk in real language. Three years ago, they weren't talking our language. Three years ago, they had to install the government. They are now redeeming themselves to some extent in that they are recognizing the mess that they helped to put us in. So this inquiry is going to be interesting because remember when Mr. Jack Dio, a few months ago when Dr. Luncheon died, said in relation to the crime wave, he and Dr. Luncheon did some things that they all secret and Dr. Luncheon carried them things to the grave. But he's still alive. He's still alive. And we want to know what he knows. We also want the records. So this is going to be an interesting inquiry. Over to you. Dr. Hines, yes, I agree with you. It is going to be interesting. But one of the caveats is who are they going to select? As the commissioner. To do, yes, of this COI. Because we had the one in Madia, right? The PPP seal. In this case, if we're talking about the 2000s, Dr. Hines, the right thing to do would be to have the opposition do the selection this time around. Right? Because it's the opposition that would have made a, a lot of these allegations. So let them be a big part of this whole selection and a whole, you know, be a big player in this whole COI um, panel and how it's selected. Very important point they raised by Wayne Caesar here. He's saying the, the inquiry is good, but given the track record of this government, we want to know who are going to be the commissioners on this commission of inquiry. Secondly, we want to know what the terms of reference is, are going to be. What are the terms of reference going to be? We saw the charade that they had when they did their inquiry into the so-called rigged elections 
or attempt to rig the election, to rig election. So we know what they're up to. So this time around, we have to ensure the terms of reference are right, that uh, there you go, Sasha family got killed. There's still the PPP hasn't told us yet who killed Sasha, who were involved. Gadraj is dead, but the people who Gadraj were in contact with are still alive. Mr. Leslie Ramsami is still alive. Remember when they caught the people on the East Coast with the high-tech equipment, more high-tech equipment than the army and police had? It was traced right back to Leslie Ramsami's ministry. I hope they all are alive. I want them to stay alive. Because with a proper inquiry, we want them to go and to give evidence before that inquiry. And we are not, we ought not to allow them to put all the blame on Dr. Lundgren. The guy eat dead and gone. And everything they're gonna say, well, it's Dr. Lundgren, Dr. Lundgren. But Jadio said very clearly, he and Lundgren, and he is still alive. Good evening to all of you. It's good to see. Some of you, some of you don't visit me on Politics 101, so I have to come here more often to see some of you on a Straight Up with Mark Benshop. I always say, you know, um, when this thing that we are now calling social media, and I think it has gone beyond social media, I think the gap between this media and the conventional media is closed in a, in a way that um, we could never envisage three years ago. But you know, Mark Benshop is the one who actually started this whole thing. And, and, and a lot of times we don't give credit to our peers. We give credit to our seniors, but not to our peers. Someone who had the courage to start this thing. And look where it has grown now. There are more people watching this program tonight that, that is going to read the morning newspapers tomorrow. Isn't that something? That, that is incredible, Dr. Heinz. And there's more people watching this program that's going to actually watch most of the news broadcasts in Guyana. That include NCN because nobody watches NCN. Nobody watches the propaganda channel, you know. So this is this is good for the Guyanese people. You know, they're able to get information. We're able to share information live, credible information with the people. And Dr. Hines, is this type of is this is these type of shows, these type of social media podcasts that would have you know, played a very, very, very big part in having the UN able to, being able to gather information, being able to know who to reach out to, to get the necessary information amongst other things. So, and, and you could see Barry Jagdio does not like this because Dr. Hines, social media wasn't that prevalent back in the late in the in the early to late 90s and in the 2000s when they were doing all those early 2000s where they was doing all those extra judicial killings the country was not opened so the world can see what's happening but now it is dr hines now it is and it is affecting them daily they can't operate it's not business as usual it is not business as usual certainly Somebody says here, and only a few fools read the Guyana Times. I love the creativity here. Um, you hear stories about the Guyana Times just printing a couple thousand and then they give away most of it and so on and so forth. No, nobody wants to see newspapers go out of business. I don't want to. I'm still an avid reader of newspapers. But this new media is very, very, very important. Um, what it does is that it allows our people, as you say, an opportunity to, opportunity to be part of the shaping of opinion. And that's why they're calling social media influencers. But it's more than influencing because we, the hosts, are influencing people. People are also influencing us because we are able to see the comments here. 
And often these comments are sometimes more, more, uh, these comments are more, more uh, 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 educated. They are more informed than even some of us who are hosts. And, 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 and so therefore, it's a two-way communication that I think is so good for a democratic society. I think it was um, uh, Thomas Jefferson who says, an important part of democracy is an informed citizenry. And we are seeing how informed our people are. Good evening to all of you. I want to thank you all for staying with us and making these shows real, because without you all, there could be no show. Good evening to you, Wendy Andrews, Benita King, um, uh, Andrea Boston. I want to say um, thanks to all of you. Some of you I can't see um, because there's so many of you, but we want to say thanks. When the- Dr. Hyatt. Yes, go right ahead. You just made a very, very important point that I just couldn't allow to slip away. You talk about democracy and you talk about people being informed. And that is 100% correct. In a democracy where people are informed and when people and where people are educated, it is hard for government to dictate to them because they're number one, they're informed. Number two, they're educated. This installed PPPC does not like education, okay? Because you cannot control an educated people. You cannot control an informed people. Hence the reason we continue to see them not make any sort of pivot towards making university free and accessible to the normal, poor, everyday Guyanese. Now, Dr. Heinz, tell me how is one supposed to even make an attempt to get his or her life in a better place or even be the first person or the first generation in a family to go to university? If the family is already poor, Dr. Hines, and if the University of Guyana is not free, how? Oh. This government is stifling the normal born and bred Guyanese. They are, they, are, they are damaging and basically eliminating careers, Dr. Hines. There are so many lawyers and nurses and these vendors that you see out there, a lot of these people, they had dreams. A lot of these sugar workers, they had dreams. Yes. You know, but their grandfather did it. Their father did it. And now they are cutting the cane. You know, the PPPC never looked at these people as anything more oh, yes. than laborers in the cane field. Over to you, Dr. Hines. Yes, you know why I like the, um, the, the testimony by daughter? Because I wrestle with this issue all the time. You know, Indian people are suffering just like black people. And I hear black people say it. I hear black leaders say it. And it always doesn't come over nice to me. When I hear an Indian woman Obviously, not a foolish person. You listen to her speech. When I hear her saying it for herself, it sounds more believable. You know, you hear black leaders, you know. Um, well, it's not only black people suffering, it's Indian people suffering. And, you know, you feel that there's a little bit of pandering that's going on there. But when you hear a daughter say there's no pandering, it's really... Yeah, my name is Jasniti Kaldata, Francis C. Vietnam. And since 1965, I become a voter. And I always place my ex next to the cup. And what they are doing today, I can't take it. So I have no more vote to give to PPP anymore. 
I'm not going to vote anymore in the moon. If they have to lose by one vote, they're losing it by that. I and that's what I mean, yeah? That I think we need to encourage more people like that to speak out. It's one of the things I liked about the teacher's strike. There were Indian teachers there in their Sequibo, in Barbies, quarantine. They were speaking in their own name and not a set of black people speaking for them. And so I think there should be an attitude change where instead of black leaders going about the place talking about Indian people suffering, they should encourage Indian people to tell their own story. I, 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 as an African, I can take the liberty to tell the African story because I belong to that community. I see it, I feel it, I hear it, it's there. I am more believable. But for me to tell an Indian story, it doesn't come over as believable. And so I am suggesting that we should encourage, make it easier for Indian people to tell their story. Because I think when Jagyo hears data, it's a punch in between this thing there, rather than I saying it for. What do, what do you think of that? You know, Dr. Hines, you are correct. And I'm going to say this. When we look at the ethnic and race issues in Guyana, Dr. Hines, in my opinion, I feel as if it is government driven. Because when you look at how the indo guyanese the afro guyanese and all six ethnic groups when you go to the market and you see how they share the market together when you go to areas like triumph those mixed villages and you see that they live side by side and there is no problem they share the hospitals together they share everything together and when it comes to the time of elections. This is when you have this whole, you know, racist, the racist comments, you know, the stoking of the racism. And it starts, you would have seen um, the recent comments by Barajak Dio at Babujan. And this is not the first time, um, at the, before, just before the 2020 elections, he would have lamented that, you know, the, the, the black men of the police force and the GDF, they're going to rape your wives. They're going to rape your daughters. Well, Dr. Hines, I have this to say to my, specifically to my indo guyanese brothers and sisters. You guys have to trust your other Guyanese Marty. Yes, they may be of a different race. But as far as I know, they have never been a threat to you guys. And Dr. Hines, I'm going to throw back a little bit here. And I'm going to say this. Africans have just about always been enslaved or at the bottom of the bucket. They've always been considered in that area. They have never rise up and try to dominate anybody because they have been dominated for so much of their history, Dr. Hines. So it just can't happen all of a sudden that you're going to see afro is going to just rise up and try to dominate anybody. It just can't happen just like that. And it's not going to happen. So I'm encouraging the other five ethnic groups and the afro guyanese to come together, Dr. Hines. And we need to start voting the issues and start putting aside, start putting aside this racism thing. Because when you look at us, we have so much more in common than uncommon. Than uncommon. Than right? right? Uncommon. You, 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 you look. Just, just one skin, Dr. Ains, and one texture of hair, that's not enough to go on 
We all have two eyes, a nose, a mouth, a brain, and all these other things, 10 fingers, all these other things in common. So this whole thing, to me, it's just ignorance, and we need to get past that. We need to get past that as a people. And as you would have said, Dr. Hines, I love coalition government. I love shared governance. I love a situation where everyone has a seat at the table. Over yeah. to you, Dr. Hines. Everyone has a seat at the table. You know, sometimes when you're in intense discussions, the time, as they say, flies and we are about that time. Wayne sees and I have been lifting the burden tonight um, in the absence of Brother Mark. And uh, um, we hope that you have found our company um, as good as you find Mark's company. We can never replace Mark, but certainly we can fill the void on a night like tonight. Mark, um, uh, certainly, as I said, is a pioneer. Um, uh, in this thing here, and we are forever grateful to him. I want to thank all of you all for stopping by tonight. Some of you are seeing me for the second time for the night, but you know, we, 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 we have got to um, spread the work out, and sometimes we have to double dip on a night as I have done tonight, and I'm grateful to you. Um, when your closing thoughts? Well, Dr. Hines, what I would like to say to the Guyanese people, you know, with this whole, you know, UN, with the UN getting involved and basically putting the government on more on its back foot, because we've already had this installed government on its back foot all the time. With the UN now getting involved and putting them more on the back foot, I encourage Guyanese to lift your heads you know, understand your worth. You know, you have a lot of worth. Your vote is what's going to determine who is going to manage your resources, manage your country, manage your police force. You know, you want a well-managed police force. You don't want a police force that you are paying taxes to them to execute your neighbor's son. You want a police force with some decency, with the understanding, a proper understanding of policing. So as I leave tonight, Guyanese, continue to be positive. And we're going to fight for you here. And we encourage you to any fear that you have taking up space in your brain, remove it. Remove it. Fear not for Guyana belongs to you. Fear not, Guyana belongs to you. Dr. Hines, it was a real pleasure spending time with you. I always look forward to, to you know, opportunities that I get to, you know, spend time with you. You are such a, a, a positive influence on the people, both you and Mr. Mark Anthony Benchcap. And to Mark, I, I must say, Mark, get well soon. You know, you guys have been doing this for so many years. I see the love and passion that you guys have for the Guyanese people. And me just coming on, being a newbie, you know, I really appreciate what I see from you guys. And I look up to you guys as role models. So I thank you tonight, Dr. Hines, and to all our listeners and viewers. You guys know the love I have for you guys. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I hope that the program was very, very edifying to you guys. Over to you, Dr. Hines. Thank you very much, my brother. And it's always a pleasure to have younger people coming through and spending time with us. Um, there's so much that we can learn and so much that we do learn from younger people. Um, we were once young, uh, but we were young in a time uh, back then. And it's good to be young today uh, because Guyana is really at a critical juncture in our long, sordid history. We have the opportunity to turn that sordid history into something positive for ourselves, our children, 
and our grandchildren. We love you, the audience, as we must. The love comes from a deep and abiding place. As David Rudder would say, it comes from deep within my Caribbean belly. That is the kind of love that we are talking about. The love that says that we are one people with different background. Our difference is our strength, not our weakness. Because out of that difference comes a commonality. I like to say, you're not going to go to Calcutta and hear a good Calypso. You're not going to go to, uh, to Nigeria and hear the real heartbeat reggae music. The roots of reggae and Calypso come from Africa, but we Caribbean people have made it our own. When God was sharing gifts, he gave us some special gifts and he gave us the gift of communicating our political and social views. We are the only people who dance to politics. Think about that. Good night. Good night, everyone. Run a cope and dance something, run away, run a cope and dance. Run a cope and dance something, run away, run a cope and dance. Jay and Jay, and she take nobody like Still I Run by Maya Andrew Lowe. You may write me down in history with your bed or twisted lie. You may tread me in the very dark, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Has my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I have always pumping in my living room, just like moons and just like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like hope spring high, still I rise. Yeah, my name is Jasniti Kaldata Francis Vietnam, and since 1965, I become a voter, and I always place my ex next to the cup, and what they are doing today, I can't take it, so I have no more vote to give to PPP anymore. I'm not going to vote anymore in the moon. If they have to lose by one vote, they're losing it by data. Hey fans, it's karaoke and oldies night this and every Thursday at Clock Twilight Sideline Dam, Buxton. Dance to the magical songs of yesteryear by popular DJs and Cam's Audio. Admission is free. Come out, let's make memories at Clock Twilight Sideline Dam, Buxton North.
Alva. Because my sassiness upset you. Why are you upset with gloom? Because I walk like I have always pumping in my living room. Just like moon, sun, just like suns with the certainty of pies. Just like hope spring high, still I rise.